Question number 78 is good question. It involves some thought provoking idea and it's from electrostatic. There is a concentric or you can say a spherical arrangement where inside there is a cavity, cavity of radius A and this is a solid one. So the inner radius becomes A and the outer radius becomes B. R is the distance from the center and this particular region has volume charge density of A by small r. Now the question is the value of A, this value such that field in the region between sphere will be constant. We want the field here to be constant. Let's try to see. So since the charge distribution is very symmetric A by R, it's radially symmetric. This is an occasion where we can always effectively use Gauss law to calculate the field. So at distance r, if we use a Gaussian surface as sphere, e into 4 pi r square would be 1 by epsilon naught times charge enclosed. The charge enclosed would be q plus this much of charge. And that would be a by r 4 pi r square dr and the limit would be from a to r. That's quite simple because we have to calculate the charge which is enclosed within this Gaussian sphere. So the limit of radius would be from a to r. So now let's try to see this would be e into 4 pi r square is 1 by epsilon naught times q plus this r would cancel here 4 pi a would be outside and r dr would be by 2 r square minus a square. Now let's further do e into 4 pi is 1 by epsilon naught q by r square plus 2 pi a 1 minus a square by r square. Now here you got to see we want this electric field to be independent of small r because we want the electric field to be constant. So in that case here is one factor where there is r and where there is another factor having r. If these two cancel, the electric field would be constant in between these two particular regions. So for that, what we require is q by r square has to be equals to 2 pi a a square divided by r square. That would be the part. And this r square and r square would get cancelled. What I did is that the term consisting of r square here and the term consisting of r square here, if they cancel, the electric field would be constant. So now we require the value of a, so that would be q by 2 pi a square. So fourth option would be the correct one for question number 78. Now let's go to question number 79. Question number 79 is from ray optics and prism is the topic from which it has been found out. In an experiment to determine mu refractive index of glass of a prism by I delta plot, the angle of incidence versus deviation. It was found that a ray incident at an angle 35 degree suffers a deviation of 40 degree and that it emerges at 79 degree. The closest value of maximum possible value of mu that is what we need to calculate. This requires a bit of thought process. In the first case delta is I1 plus I2 minus A you get and the first data would allow us say incident angle is 35 so this is 35 the deviation is 40 degree emerges at 79 minus of A. So this allows us to calculate the value of angle of prism which is 79 plus 35 minus of 40. So how much I get? So that would be 74 degree. That's the angle of prism. Now we are supposed to calculate the value of refractive index and of course the maximum possible value. So we need to seek for some inequality relationship so that you can mathematically put all those things and you calculate. So the best idea is let's try to see the condition of minimum deviation when the 
deviation is minimum, you see, that would be 2i minus e, but we need to calculate the value of i as well. And for that, sine i would be mu sine r, which is a by 2, and that would be 37 degree. So you get sine i is 3 mu by 5. So this is one equation, and this is another equation here. From this particular thing, what you could see is, see, I have the value of deviation, which is 40 degree, and that deviation has to be greater than delta min. And now you can easily calculate delta min. Of course, a bit of trigonometric calculation is required. All I have to put is delta is greater than delta min. The deviation here is greater than the minimum deviation, which we can easily calculate. Now, when you solve this, you don't get the exact value, but very close to you reach to 1.8. And it's not a big task to calculate. There's a small bit of sign involved and you can do that and you can always easily locate the value which is very close to the given option. So that completes question number 79. Now we'll move to question number 80. Let's see.